Biscuits back, back, back. Tell your friends, friends, friends. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Holy shit. We've only just begun. Okay. Real talk. Very beginning of the episode. I have started this like three or four times. And my name is Biscuit, by the way. Um, if you want to know more about nicknames and fun facts, I'm going to record an introduction video right after this. But, okay, there's your intro. Now, back to the matter at hand. This feels so awkward. And I was, like, really getting the hang of it. So I'm glad that I'm back. I have a lot to talk about but I realized over like the time between the last episode and this episode that I just do so much more than knitting and a, a good chunk of the podcast will probably still be knitting, but um, like maybe just over half. So I'll provide a timestamp for the folks that don't want to hear about the knitting and you can jump ahead. Um, and for those of you that want both, awesome. You're in for a great ride. Start to Finish is a great show, whether you know what the hell I'm talking about or not. Because um, I make weird faces and noises and I sing. I've sung in like the first three attempts to, to like make this video. And if you just want to see the knitting, that's totally fair. No, no judgment for anybody. Let's get started with the knitting and we'll catch up with other details uh, later on. Um, it's been a long time my knitting has slowed down because I injured myself knitting and I don't care how many of you non-knitters laugh at me. Y'all don't know. So laugh all you want, but can you make a sock? No. Actually, even if you can't make a sock and you knit, you're still awesome. It's not all about socks. Anyway. These Addy whatevers, I don't remember what the fancy name is that they gave them. Destroyed my, I destroyed my right arm with them. They just caused a lot of friction between the yarn and the needle, the needle and the hole. <laughs> and so instead of just like moving them to a pair of needles that I knew were better for my hands. I just kept knitting on these and I knit a pair of socks for my, uh, one of my brothers and most of the men in my life have like minimum size 12 shoe. So they don't get a ton of socks from me. I just, do you ever know that you're doing something you shouldn't do, but you keep doing it the wrong way anyway, thinking, huh, I could stop and do something this way and it would be better. Well, I do that and I can't explain why. I've had an injured arm and probably should have totally stopped knitting, but I didn't. And then I helped people move and didn't uh, pay attention to my limitations. Today's a good day. I knit two rows on a shawl that I'm gonna show you later. If I ever stop rambling. And I'm actually, I'm trying to intentionally knit slower and in a more relaxed way because I am a tight knitter. Just for all those folks out there like myself who love to just like plow through projects and can knit pretty fast and you hold a lot of tension in your hands and your shoulders, just listen to your body. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to knit anymore. Y'all want to see some shit? Let's start with that show that I picked up. So this hat, it's my first, second hat with a pom-pom. So this is the, the Musselberg hat. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I did my best. I tried. That's what counts. Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady was knitting a lot of these a couple months ago. And I thought it would be really fun 
to make one and I love stripes. The yarn is, uh, it's fingering weight, but the pattern can be adjusted for any weight of yarn. And like when you read through it, like I would just take a second to really read through it and understand like the gauge that you're trying to get and what that means for your needle size and, and row count and everything. Yeah, it was pretty mindless. I used yarn from my Coast to Coast Mush Club. I think this was from the Mush Club. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Aaron's yarn. Mm. It's uh, glorious. And this year her uh, sock club or her, it's not, it's not a sock club. I don't know what I'm talking about. Her just like monthly mystery club. She chose mushrooms and they're so cool. And so I think this was one of them. And then the brown is her redwood. That came out last year. And I think that's what sparked the Mush Mystery Club for 2021. And so I took the redwood and another yarn and knitted my first pair of socks for my dad. And so I put some of that yarn, some of that yarn. What the fuck was that? F-bomb. Hadn't even been 10 minutes. Okay. Not sorry. Move along. So I thought that would be cool to have that in there because I'm super sentimental and my dad's knit worthy and he loves his socks. So, um, so yeah. And then the pom pom is the grocery girls. And I'd never like bought a pom pom before. And I just bought my first pom pom this year. Not a pom pom virgin anymore, folks. And I didn't realize that the little foam disc that comes with the pom pom helps stabilize it. So I threw away one of them and then realized after I put a pom pom on this hat what it was for. So just in case you didn't know, if it comes with like a little foam disc, it's it helps stabilize, which is good for this hat. It's a little slouchy, but I love it. And green's not a color. I'm about to say it's not a color I pick out and I'm freaking wearing a green shirt. My jazz shirt. <laughs> All right. Yep. So I'm just not even going to go on that tangent because I don't know how I would dig myself out of that one. So, all right. So next is the Lavella shawl. Don't remember who wrote it. It'll be linked below. And you're going to sense a theme here for a second. This is coast to coast yarn and fun story about this. I posted just this section when I was knitting this section and someone, one of my friends, I think it was either Sarah or Aaron said that it looks it looks like peanut butter and jelly and I was like well it just so happens that the next color is gonna look like the bread um, this is also from the mush club I think it's the polypore I'm pretty sure so I combined all three of those colors the original one was really pretty too because it had really pale pinks and grays, but I just really needed stripes with these two yarns. And I love the contrast of not just the stripes and the colors, but the texture change. The only thing is I haven't been blocking my stuff as aggressively as I used to. And so, and I just, I don't know. I felt like also, why don't I just say it instead of adding in a thousand words? I wanted the point here, you know, to be pointier. <laughs> I wanted the point to be pointier. And it just doesn't have the definition that I thought that it should have. See, I've been gone too long. I forgot about this part. I won't try the hat on as it's prescribed, but it's got to go on top of my head. We gotta make this look really good because it's been a while and I mean if you're here still then you're loving it too. There we go. Yep, that's good. We're 
doing good. We're doing good. All right. So this is my peanut butter and peanut butter and peanut butter and jelly Lavello shawl. And I love it. But I finished it when it was way too warm to wear it. So fall just needs to get here soon. Okay, so the next FO is one of my favorites um, ever. One of my favorite knits ever. I wish I had known about the straight needle trick for the dropped stitches, but I mean, that's what I get for waiting so long to watch um, Chevis's podcast. Chevy Real Stuff. I'm going to link that below too. This is the Hipster Shawl by Hohi. And I did this. Oh, that green doesn't look right. That's better. Yeah. This is Mayak yarn. And the funny thing, the funny story around this shawl is that every time I wear it, I tell the story behind the yarn. And it doesn't matter if you've heard the story before or not. So, and my parents figured this, my dad figured this out um, pretty early on. So I tell the story about how the yarn is um, sourced from baby yaks that are very gently brushed and well taken care of by a nomadic Tibetan tribe. I think I'm getting all of this right. Forgive me if I'm not. And then the yarn is shipped to Italy where it's um, spun and dyed. Don't know if it's in that order, probably. And then, you know, it shipped worldwide. And that's just a, there, it's a really, really great story. And I think she, she being one of the, the ladies that started the business, um, she tells in like her podcast maybe, or maybe it was an interview with the grocery girls. I don't know. Anyway, I tell the story about the yarn every single time I wear it. And at one point my dad was like, are you going to tell that story? Every time I, it, I was like, yes, I am. Because it's very special yarn. Um, I made tassels for the first time. I don't know how long that's going to last, but just get this. There we go. I don't even remember what I was saying. Look at that. That is a sexy beast right there. The shawl, obviously. <laughs> All right. This is about to get interesting. That's it for my finished objects. And the only UFO, I'm only showing you one whip because again, I haven't really, oh no, wait, fudge. I'm showing you two. I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you. And I didn't bring it in here. So I'm going to have to go get it. There, that's better. So I started making the Rocket Tea by Tannis Fiber Arts. And it was inspired by a yarn that's dyed by the amazing Sarah of Craft Me Not Yarn Company. I think I realized that at least half of my stash is Craft Me Not Yarn Company and Coast to Coast Yarn Company. And they're almost even in the amount of yarn that I have. I think Coast to Coast is like that much farther ahead. Not, it's not a competition though. Like it's just exciting to know how much of their yarn that I have. So I started making the Rocket Tea the light is changing. It's getting late. And so this is from Sarah's um, Macaron collection. And so I decided, of course, I wasn't just going to do one solid color, even stripes. I needed four different colored stripes. And there's not really, um, a, I just kind of put in a new color when it felt right. And then I did this is still on the needles, obviously, so it's not gonna look like it will in the end, but I had, you know, the faded stripes here, and then I really liked that, so I did it again in the front. I've still gotta do the back. There's not that much done back there, 
And then I'm gonna pick up stitches and bring in the neckline. And I thought, and this means I have to weave in more ends, but I thought it would be cool because I'm gonna take the neckline in a good amount of just doing like one or two rows of each color and ending on the brown because the bottom of, I'm doing a split, a split hem, a rounded split hem. I don't know if those are the terms, I'm making some shit up, but it sounds good to me. But anyway, the brown is gonna be um, on the hem on the sleeves, which I need to finish, and the back, and the neckline. So it's beautiful and I love it. And I think part of the reason why I'm taking so long on this one is because I really enjoy knitting it. The yarn is just, it's just unbelievable. It's really gorgeous. It's, it's a work of art and, and it feels so nice on the needles and I'm using my Lekka needles. I just like saying the name of the needle. I'm not gonna try to get that to focus, but, um, and I decided to use those needles because this yarn, oh, my foot's going to sleep. This yarn is really smooth and slick. <laughs> Whatever, I needed the extra tension on my needle. <laughs> stop, stop it. Oh gosh, you're still there. You have found your people. <laughs> Welcome home. I don't know what's going on anymore. Y'all know that though, right? All right, shit, I gotta go get, I gotta go get the bag for the other whip and my foot's asleep. So I don't know if I'm going to make it back. <laughs> this might be the end of the episode. And then I'm in the ER with a broken leg or something. Um, oh, shit. This does not feel right. <laughs> so I got up to go get the bag. <laughs> and I realized my whip is still attached to the string. And I've got freaking a yarn string running between my legs <laughs> all the way into the living room holy shit oh the bag <laughs> the shawl's not in here <laughs> son of a bitch all right this is uh welcome to the show did you know it was gonna be this much of a show I didn't even know that. I thought maybe I'd get a few laughs out of someone in about 30 minute mark. <sighs> okay. My last whip is the night shift shawl. And I have really enjoyed learning mosaic knitting. I mean, if you know how to do a knit stitch, a purl, and a slip stitch. I feel like you know how to, I would say, how to, mm, you know what I'm saying. I'm not even gonna try. Anyway, so for my birthday, I took um, my birthday money and bought some spin cycle yarn. I'm fighting it because Shit's gonna stay on until we're done with the knitting. I bought myself spin cycle yarn to make the night shift shawl. And I think that the yarn is crazy cool because you've got, not only is it like three or so colors applied together, but it's also uh, a gradient. And so I'm, I mean, I'm really not that far off, I think you get close to 200 stitches and I'm at like 176. I can remember that, but so the shit that I can't remember, like that's annoying. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I started down here and I just, I had a plan. I did, I had a plan for 
what it was going to look like, what colors I was going to do when, and I totally throw it up, threw it out the window because the thing about this yarn is until you knit it, you really don't get it. Mm -mm. Um, no rhyming, no rhyming. This is not poetry hour, although it could be. No, I want at least one person to stay, so we won't do that. Anyway, you just, the way that the color fades and it's just gorgeous. And I just thought, why don't I just, I've got this new thing where I just like multicolored projects and I don't plan them out too much. And I start to knit and then I'll be like, okay, well, you know, that color's been fun. Glad we're friends now, but, or it's like, oh, it's like yard, yarn speed dating, but you like them all and you get to keep them all. How about that? Oh boy, that's not gonna stay up there. I am really enjoying it. I love the yarn. I will say this though, it's very expensive. If it hadn't been for birthday money, I wouldn't have knitted it. I wouldn't have knit it, knitted it. I don't know. Um, with spin cycle yarn, just because it's so expensive. And you know, I'm not, they, they set the price for a reason. This yarn is the shit, but because it's the shit, it's not super cheap. And I think Heather of the Four Star Knits is doing one and she got um, some worsted wheat yarn. I don't know the company. I'll, I'll try to go back and find it. I think it was her last episode. It was like 80 bucks total for two big skeins and they're, they both had the same gradient, but she started from opposite ends which means you don't have to like think about changing to your next color and all of that. And you've got four ends to weave in and I've been weaving in as I go, just because it's, it was going to be a nightmare if I didn't. Plus I'm not supposed to be knitting a lot right now. Um, so yeah, no socks. I'm doing stuff that's easier on the hands and not even doing much of that. Um, but, uh, oh jeez, I gotta take it all off. Take it all off. That's it for all the knitted stuff. Once I'm done with, once I'm done with the two whips that I've got right now, and I know everybody says this, but like for real, for real, I have like a huge, basket of unfinished objects, UFOs, if you will. And I just want to get through them. It's, I guess I don't really care that they're not finished. I'm not going to go off on this tangent. Corn, so Cornbread and Honey was the first indie dyer that I ever purchased from. And not that long ago, I wasn't ser really serious about knitting until like a couple months before the pandemic started. And her yarn is just incredible too. She's one of my favorites. I don't have as much of her in my stash because I knit with her stuff pretty quick in the beginning because I didn't have a stash. I bought yarn for projects once upon a time. As we do, some of us. Whoops. I'll start doing that again one day. Okay. Reason number one that I bought this yarn is because Take the ball off. It is absolutely stunning. That, I mean, that's sort of close. You just need to buy it so you can see it in person. But uh, the thing about it is it's got these like, it's got pink in it for sure, right? Duh. But it's got these like peachy orange tones to it and the black 
excuse me, <laughs> I'm drinking seltzer water and I just burped. I really hope you can hear that. That's great. But like, ah, oh, see, like there's that pink. That is not blowing out. Like that hat, I don't even know if you can see what I'm trying to show you. Whatever, anyway, it's freaking gorgeous, right? You wouldn't have caught, I wouldn't have been caught dead in pink when I was younger, but I love it now. The other reason that I had to buy this yarn is because look, look what it's called. It's called Cashmere. It's not my favorite Led Zeppelin song. However, it's an epic one. And I feel like she captured that song very well. It's a 7525 merino nylon, 463 yards, 100 grams. The next one that I was going to show you is my Coast to Coast August Mush Club. You know, and the first mystery club that I bought was Aaron's, Aaron's Coast to Coast yarn was Aaron's August colorway last year and I made a pair of socks with them. I think it was like the title picture of the, the last episode. But anyway, this one's called Brittle Gill. And so that is a mushroom. I don't eat mushrooms or like them. So I don't, uh, I don't know what that, that means, but I love the colors that she makes from mushroom inspiration. So the cool thing about this yarn, I mean, her stuff is always beautiful. And the thing that I loved the most about this one and why it's so much fun is because, and it's not showing up very well on the screen, but the different colors that she got in the speckles and there were colors that, there are colors that aren't with the main like the brown and the green and the cream. Like it's got this, it's got, it's extra. That's what it is. Aaron, your speckles are extra. And I thank you for it. So, oh my gosh, I forgot the most important knitted thing to show you. Listen people. I am in love with Susan B. Anderson now. I had, I'd heard the grocery girls call her Queen B and they are so right. Nailed it. I wanted to make a friend of mine some knitted charms that she could hang up um, for the fall up in her house and I know that her daughters would just love it. So I knit it and let's like, it's time for fall. I'm done with the summer nonsense. It's time for fall. So I'm gonna knit some motherfucking pumpkins. And that's what I did. The pumpkins were probably my favorite. So you need to go check out, doo -doo -doo -doo. is that focusing, focus. Gosh, my hands can't stay still. Anyway. This was, um, I think this was 29 Bridges yarn, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. So I made that one, and then I made, this is definitely 29 Bridges for the pumpkin. The stem, maybe. Um, yeah, these are a lot of fun, and you know, I, uh, I'll show the rest of these quickly just because you can go to my Ravel, Ravelry page. I don't know why I hate saying that word and I just can't do it very well. Um, and you can see all of them on my page. The thing about the leaf is I wish I hadn't blocked it out. I feel like it lost, I liked the shape of it before I blocked it. And I don't, so I don't know why I blocked it, duh. The first one I made was this little itty bitty, it's itty bitty. Little acorn. And then I just um, held my yarn double for uh, like a DK marled effect there. And then I made, I didn't like the ghost patterns that I found out there. So I made a little ghost. 
then I was like, that doesn't really look like a little ghost anymore because of what I've done. So I knitted a little witch's hat. And it's a witch with a witch's hat. Oh shit. You get the idea. It's a little... <laughs> This is my Halloween costume. It's gonna stick bobby pins in there and that'll be my Halloween costume. All right. I have notes. Oh, so I have books to show you. One of the things, well, let me show the knitting books first, but one of the things I wanted to start doing is um, at least showing one book that's not like knitting related and tell you about like maybe a great resource for like getting books and then like maybe a music, some music I'm listening to because I have great taste in music. Notice I didn't laugh. I'm serious. I have great taste in music. I listen to everything. I'll add that to the introduction video. I think somebody asked me about my favorite album introduction video. All right, so the the two knitting books that I brought along, one of them is called Wisp by the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Farmer's Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Did I say that right then? I said it right the second time. That's what counts. This book is beautiful. Some of you that also watch The Grocery Girls will have seen this book before. This pattern and which is the, I can't read that. The text is a little hard for me to read on the, and then this, which is more like a handkerchief, like are just stunning. So I, I mainly bought it for those two patterns, but there are just tons of amazing patterns in this book. So that's a good thing to check out. Speaking of Queen B, Susan B. Anderson, y'all just don't know. This book, this book has got, I mean, they're itty bitty. It's just a book of itty bitties. <laughs> just leave now. Save yourself. So I thought ahead on this one because I really wanted to show you the pictures and I don't want to fight with the camera and whatever to try to hide the actual pattern. So I covered them up. Don't always expect this level of type A-ness out of me, but it's happening today. So it starts out as a turtle and then you flip it inside out and it becomes a frog. She's got not not all of the um, not all of the toys in this book are reversible, but she does have quite a few. And then it can go from can you see that an elephant to a tiger, and a cat to a mouse. Oh, this one's cool. This one you make a nest and it goes from a little bird to an egg. Which came first, chicken or the egg? So, Itty Bitty Toys by Susan B. Anderson. I haven't made anything out of it yet, but I have plans because all these people keep having babies. And uh, so I'm gonna make their kids toys. Hey, look, that's still sitting up there. Check me out. So the, one of the non knitting books that I'm into right now is called um, Notes from a Young Black Chef. I don't have the physical book to show you right now um, because I'm listening to the audio version and I think it's read by the author and it's really good. 
I've, I'm really enjoying it. I was a line cook for a long time. And I mean, the person, the chef that's writing this book is like a bajillion, kajillion miles ahead of my skill set. But in the restaurant industry, whether it's the dinkiest, grungiest little sandwich shop to, you know, fine dining, there are some parallels there, um, mainly I think in the culture. It's been a great read and it's also, I'm glad that I'm reading it so that I can gain an understanding of yet another person's perspective in, in an industry where I know it was difficult to be the only woman in the kitchen sometimes. It wasn't like that everywhere I worked, but there were places where you were one of the few and um, it wasn't always easy, you know, but to hear it from another perspective where it was even more difficult for that person, you know, just gaining that understanding and of um, somebody else's perception as much as I can, right? Like we can never know what somebody else experiences like 100% because we're not them, but we can at least gain more of an appreciation what they're going through so that's been really good I think it was like a six hour book so reading it is probably a pretty quick read probably not well I'm like like I want my book to be like a thousand pages so maybe it isn't a quick read and I'm just weird I am weird all right so someone asked me and I'm going to I'm going to sort of do this in the introduction video. <laughs> My feet are still tangled up in yarn. Um, uh, to draw out my favorite recipe. So I thought it'd also be fun to just share the different cookbooks that I have. Yes, I know. I can just Google. Here's the tangent about Google. There's your disclaimer. Can't stop burping. There are times where the whole let me Google that for you thing is totally legit. Like when someone's like, how do you use such and such in Google Sheets? Google created it, ask Google, okay? But then there are times where there's so much information out there on certain things that you're usually gonna get a bunch of junk. And if you don't always know what you're looking for or you don't want to waste your time you ask somebody that knows, right? That's okay. And in this case, that's why I like to have cookbooks by chefs who know what the hell they're doing. And this is one of them. It's Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking by Marcella Hassan. I don't know how to say your last name, but I tried. And this is written by an Italian woman born and raised in Italy and she went to culinary school in Italy. Fast forward, she is also now, um, where she what? <sighs> She's an instructor at a culinary arts in school. What is wrong with me? Words. Period. End statement. You know what I'm trying to say. This is legit. Too legit to quit. Stop it. I think I'm out of stuff to show you. Of course I'm not done talking. I still have time. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about? Uh, yeah, it's been a while because, I don't know, pandemic brain, a lot of people moving, and just trying to like get me put back together a little bit more um so yeah I'll make another one of these as soon as I can I, d I would like to do it sooner than I did the last time because this is a lot of fun I did gain a lot of new friends because of it and um apparently some of you want to hang out with me on here and that's really exciting that's my commitment to you my new and returning friends what was I talking about? 
<laughs> this needs to be over soon. Clearly I am not going to be able to hold it together much longer. I've been living in a pandemic fog. I don't remember the month of July really. I know some shit happened. But yeah, I don't, I don't remember the month of July. So that's part of the reason why this has taken so long. It's like I lost an entire month. Anybody else? I don't know. And then let's see. I do have some new podcasters. Well, Chevis, obviously. Chevy Rail stuff. I really, I think that she and I are going to meet in person one day. And like, we're already kind of friends, right? I think so. But when we meet in person, like just get out of the way, everybody else. Because we're just going to take over while we're together. We're going to... We're going to combine our forces of awesomeness and have an amazing time and nobody else will be able to keep up. It's going to be great. All while we're like sitting and knitting, right? <laughs> uh, I started binge watching Needles at the Ready and I found out that Ray is also a huge Mist of Avalon fan. Um, I love that book. I read it every year and a half, two years, especially in the fall. The audiobook is good, but my physical copy I got from Atlanta Bo Atlantic Books in Asheville. It's not there anymore, unfortunately. My dad actually bought it for me. Um, and I think I've taped the binding at least once, but it's an amazing book. It's epic. You gotta be ready to read a big book. So, um, so Needles at the Ready, binge watching them, um, started watching We Share Needles and they're awesome and we're going to be friends one day and I'm going to visit them too, one day. And I saw that Happy Knits has a new video up. I haven't caught up with her, but I'm probably going to, that's what I'm going to do tonight. So look out. I'm going to come hang out with you. Uh, another podcast I started watching is by Andrea Mowry. I believe that she's always had like instructional videos, but she just started doing a podcast where she answers viewers questions. And it's the perfect podcast to watch if you want to sit and knit and learn some really great stuff. She has an amazing wealth of knowledge and so do her viewers who also comment when, and she'll let you know, like, I don't know, but like, if anybody else knows, can you comment below? And, um, I've just learned so much from them. I really have. And I really hope she continues to do them. I feel like I've leveled up as a knitter, just watching her video and listening to her. So definitely go check that out. Um, and ask her questions because she'll do it as long as you have questions. And like I said, if she doesn't know, she'll ask her viewers to, you know, yep. I don't think I can finish a complete sentence most of the time for the rest of this time that we're together. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. It's almost over, I promise. Um... I think that's it for podcasts. So let's end with music. So if you want to know my favorite album of all time, you're going to have to watch the introduction video. But lately I've been stuck on um, Tank and the Bangas because Jazz Fest in New Orleans is there any other jazz fest? No, they just try to be. Was canceled again, which I knew that was gonna happen. And I, I mean, I couldn't have gone anyway, even if there was no pandemic, it's just wasn't in the cards uh, for this year. And I've accepted it. And for those of you that don't know, I'm obsessed with New Orleans, not sorry. And I love the jazz festival because I love jazz. I said that already. Unless I said it in one of the videos, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make the cut. Where like, I just kept starting over because I didn't know how to start. I wonder if other podcasters have that problem. 
was I talking about? Jazz Fest. So anyway, uh, the first time I saw Tank and the Bangas was at the Jazz Festival and it was on the Acura stage. They have tons of stages. The Acura stage is one of the bigger stages and we were just walking around, you know, it's good to sort of have like your one or two things that you really want to see, but you need to just kind of, my, in my humble opinion, you need to just kind of wander around New Orleans and you'll find what you're looking for, you know, cause New Orleans knows. She knows what you're looking for. If you love her, she will love you back. And she's going to give you what you're looking for if you trust her and you stay away from Bourbon Street. And haters be damned. Bourbon Street's disgusting. It's the last place that you should visit in the entire city. Anyway. The like four people that probably watched this have disappeared now because I've insulted Bourbon Street. Probably not. Anyway. Fudge. Taking the bangas. So we were walking around the festival grounds and I heard this amazing sound. And we kept walking closer and what this is us walking. <laughs> I don't know what that is. And it was Tank and the Bangas. And I don't remember what song it was, and it did it, I mean it doesn't matter. Like it was if you really love music and you've been to an unbelievable show, you know what I'm talking about, where it's just like the universe has opened up a portal and these amazing out of this world creatures are like on the stage creating the most amazing thing you've ever heard up to that point. Like there are moments like that in live shows. And this is one of them. So, huge fan. Can you tell? You should check them out if you haven't heard of them. They're low, they're native New Orleanians. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I'll find out. Um, anyway, the two songs that I would recommend... Well, their NPR Tiny Desk concert is a must. Must, must, must. It's amazing. And then if you just want to listen to a couple songs on an album, then I would suggest listening to the song Quick or Dope Girl Magic. Uh, yeah, I would say those two. Well, okay, so you can start with whatever you want. But those are my two favorites that I listen to a lot in the car. I think it's fun to exercise to them. I mean, I don't do a lot of exercising, but when I do, it's a good one. Um, I think that's it for now. I'm going to go uh, eat some dinner and then maybe record the intro video. Um, today, the sun is going down. I might lose the light. Maybe I'll do it right after this. I don't know. Whatever. You don't care. It'll be there when it's there. Um, I don't know how long it'll take me to edit this, but it is what it is. And stay safe and catch you on the flip side.